I want to take you alive now to uh, Mr. Flack in Northwest DC. Flack, what's going on? Hey Topper, we're at 600 Northeast DC on Rhode Island Avenue where there were multiple water rescues that had to be carried out by DC Fire EMS. There are at least three vehicles, maybe three vehicles and a truck under that underpass, which is uh, uh, protects a metro that runs over it. We don't see anybody in those vehicles right now, but they are still stranded and likely will be for some time, at least until this water recedes. We also have DC Fire and EMS on the scene of this development. If you know where the Alamo Draft House and Cinema is over here in Northeast, this is right outside of that. We believe we have some sort of a flooded elevator shaft that seems to be taking up a lot of the attention of the DC Fire and EMS. There is that boat, James. Can you get that boat that was over there? When we arrived, on the scene there were actually DC fire and EMS personnel specially trained in that boat on this water as if it were a river trying to make sure that everybody who was in those vehicles that got stranded ended up safe and secure and as of now we think everybody did we have a number of people standing over here to your left James and it does appear that unless they are just bystanders they may be uh, related to this building which uh, obviously has uh, some issues some attention being paid close attention to these DC fire and EMS personnel that have been trying to wedge open those doors. Uh, I did try and get some information on that. They said they were too busy to talk right now. James, if you flip all the way around back to where we were and just show everybody down uh, Rhode Island Avenue here, um, you can see that uh, this water, it actually has been receding a little bit. Um, it was higher when we got here, probably where we're standing right now was where the water was just about uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. And then if you turn all the way around over here, you can see this traffic that is uh, just come to a standstill up here. I mean, if you're trying to come through this Rhode Island Avenue uh, corridor in Northeast, forget about it. We had to fight side streets to get down here. We saw cars being turned away, flashing lights as far as the eye can see. Now, this is an area that's kind of prone to flooding, not just this spot right here, but Rhode Island Avenue in general. It was just two years ago in September of 2020 that I was on Rhode Island Avenue on the northwest side. So just, I don't know, half a mile or so up there where they had the same amount of flooding. You can see this ground right here. It just, it goes up and down and there are a lot of peaks and there are a lot of valleys. So when this flash flooding comes, these valleys really just fill up with water and drivers are just caught, caught stranded. I mean, you can't imagine anybody knowingly thought that they could get through. But as we get just a little bit closer and probably don't want to get too much closer, you can see all the way off in the distance, that's another car. That's a fourth car I'm just counting right now that just stopped right at the edge there but some of these cars are totally submerged and James I think we have time if you want to go to this side and just show people what's going on this side watch that step right there buddy right there so this is what it's like on the other side this is uh, you want to get oh, watch okay we got to stay away from the manhole covers those can be uh, problematic but you can see those uh, trucks and that vehicle right there completely submerged and stranded and again keep in mind the water has receded and is receding quickly you have to imagine that at the height of this those cars if not totally submerged were very much submerged you can see again dc fire and ems working to get inside that uh condominium building along with the retail there that water if you can if you can see it right there on the ground really flowing still uh pretty quickly it's pouring out of the building, it, it's pouring out of the building. okay so so we got, we got James telling me, James Hash, our, our photojournalist, making the very good observation that water is pouring out of the building. So you have to, I mean, we'll, we'll have to figure out exactly how high the water was. You can actually see a, uh, um, some sort of a container floating down uh, Rhode Island here, uh, Rhode Island Avenue here in Northeast. Really a surreal scene. But as they try to open up these doors and let the water flood at, flow out, so they can start what is going to be a long, long, long recovery process here. But as the flashing lights continue, as the sirens go off in the, in, in the distance, this section has come to a complete standstill right now. Again, we have not seen any people thus far inside those cars. Thankfully, we believe that they were uh, brought to safety before we got here. And again, just pointing out this water is receding. It's receding quickly. That's good news. Guys, in the live shot that we started, I was telling you about the receding water. Right over there, there was water 
within this live shot and now it's already gone gone down so this is a quickly uh developing situation in which these floodwaters that came and just just whooshed through this entire area and caught everybody on guard now hey, Flack, seems to be almost uh, uh, going away just as quickly yeah sure yeah so you were you were looking at district dogs and if you can ask james to pan back over to district dogs we've done to district considerable dogs. reporting about this business in particular which Back in 2022, I'm looking at some of our previous reporting, flooded maybe three times in a month. So this area has really been prone to flooding. And then there was the whole Northwest Boundary Tunnel that was supposed to be done earlier this year that was supposed to help alleviate some of this. Are you hearing anything about the, the status of that and, and in particular how District Dog is, is doing? I don't, I don't, but I'm going to try and walk over here. I'm not going to try and surprise anybody, but if anybody who's a resident here, we're live on WUSA 9, can tell me what's going on. Are you, are you guys from inside the building? Um, no comments. Oh, you're from District Ducks. Yeah. Our, our anchor, Leslie, was just talking. You guys yeah, have had sorry, problems we'll with talk flooding. Later. Okay, all right. Well, I wish you the best. Obviously, that was, I didn't see his shirt as somebody who was with District Dogs. Eric, um, what so are that those, flooding what are those issues barriers? that you have been. What are those barriers set up in front of the business? It's almost uh, like they saw this coming, if I'm seeing those correctly. I saw sandbags right. and, and some sort of barrier system. Right. I, I'm going to have to guess because, uh, you know, the, the supervisors here are, are way, way too busy, I think, to talk to me right now. But it certainly seems like, and James is obviously giving you a different visual right now inside uh, what's going on inside District Dogs as they uh, try to, oh, wow, it does not look good in there at all. Obviously, you can tell. Now, you can see that water line, James. Why don't you check out the water line, which is about shoulder height to uh, head high down there. So you're talking about five to six feet at least the water was high inside this location. Obviously, the damage here is just going to be devastating. Uh, Longo, when you're talking about the barricades outside, I think it's pretty clear that this was an attempt to try and keep some of that water from flushing, uh, flooding into this business. Um, but I think the Mother Nature just won this round, as you can see, because, you know, we're watching the we're watching the D.C. fire and EMS personnel inside right now. And uh, I mean, they, they, they still have water up to, to their ankles or higher yeah, we're as they try to it. sift through. And we're looking at it with you as you're as we're getting that view from Hash's camera and you standing there. We can see the firefighters in there. I don't know if you can see it as well as we can from this distance here, Eric, but we can see what they're up against there. And a DC Fire apparently tweeted out recently that there have been no injuries. But uh, one of the things that's pretty interesting adds is this is district dogs. We haven't seen any dogs around. Do we know anything about? Whether there were any dogs there at the time I think when, when you, all this happened? When they tweet no injuries, I think we uh, assume that's, you know, human injuries. But there does seem to be a considerable effort by all of those uh, EMS folks right now inside of that building that wouldn't be there if, if this was yeah, just a water situation. Yeah, it makes you wonder. I just went over and asked one of the employees there, to your point, Leslie, and uh, I asked her if all the dogs were okay, and, and I just got a no comment. Um, uh, we're getting a lot of concerned faces um, on, on the part of uh, on the part of those who are wearing district dog shirts. Uh, Can down you tell here. us what the business is? Uh, they've all is it a dog daycare? It yeah, is. Yeah, it, it is dog dog boarding. Dog yeah, boarding. Dog I just, boarding. I just so confirmed they... that it's dog boarding. Yeah, so that, what I'm remembering so is if, they used to have dogs uh, that would stay there overnight. So presumably there are likely potentially dogs there in their care yeah. uh, if yeah. if they were having some uh, at this point. Uh, obviously, it's a very traumatic situation are, for a lot of people. Do you know if all the people. dogs are okay? Um, I don't, yeah. Okay, I, think, I, I just asked one, one woman, and, and I don't think they really want to talk. I did just ask if we know if all the dogs are okay, and, and I think we just got to... No, I don't. Um, so as, as we come here and we're developing an understanding of what's going he on here live on the scene, um, I, think, I think there is some concern about whether or not there are still animals inside. Again, I want to stress that that is not confirmed. You know, I'm it, just telling you what I'm seeing on the faces. And Eric, to, to Leslie's point that this has, uh, flooding like this has happened at this business, maybe not to this degree uh, in the past, you know, I go back to the point that, I, that I, I brought up a second ago about those those seemingly water barricades that were set up in front of the business. I mean, that didn't appear to be something that would be set up rather quickly. 
uh, set up in anticipation of some sort of weather event, or perhaps it's a semi-permanent fixture uh, outside of the store. Um, I, I wonder if at some point James could get us a, a, another shot of that after we're, we're seeing some of these shots uh, inside uh, yeah. of the business here, and also wondering if, if anyone on the street could tell you if that's just always there. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think I think we're going to leave the visuals with what's going on inside. I think that's the most compelling. I think I can also tell you the story as I'm down here at those uh, barricades. We'll show you them in a bit and whether or not this, this is something that would be thrown up quickly. These are large barricades. They have multiple, multiple, very heavy sandbags uh, in front of them. To your point, this is not something that can get thrown up in, in, in a minute or two or three. You can see um, as one of the district dog's employees walks by, you can really see how much uh, time this took uh, to get up. And, um, and uh, I'm just trying to listen in on some of the other, other uh, conversations that are going on here right now. And while you're doing but, that, we can, uh, Adam, point, that right. we, uh, we can clearly see how much that water has receded just in the couple of minutes that you've been standing there. But yeah, you can see, I mean, concerned looks on the faces you can only imagine being in that position if you've yeah. got wondering uh, if your dog yeah. is okay or wondering if people you know are okay i mean these people are on phones they're looking through the windows they're watching every move that the, the fire fighters and the emergency personnel are making and then we saw another shot where we could see down where the cars were trapped where it looked like people were trying to maybe get to their flooded cars so a lot of activity there this evening Okay, sorry guys, if you were coming to me, I'm just trying to talk to uh, some of the uh, bystanders uh, live without kind of, oh, here comes the dog, James, James. Hey, here's, a, here's some good news right Puppy here. Puppy rescue. Oh, that's here's terrific. Here's some heartwarming. Two dogs. Here's some heartwarming, oh. wow. I just got chills. They look wet and they look scared, but they look okay. Let's just hope all of, all of the dogs inside are the same. I'm gonna try and just to, oh wow! Oh, they're they're looking for the owners right now. That's a terrific are. sight That's to a, see. At they're least looking we for can the owners see a right couple now. of them are okay, Eric. Yeah, and you can see. Oh, look at the. And, the that looks like it might be the owner of the business, or certainly people that work there, just checking to make sure the dogs are okay. Oh, giving and it looks like maybe oh, he's wow. reuniting them with their owners. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, it looks like that's what we're seeing live on WUSA nine right it looks now, like and uh, it's. Uh, and they, they're obviously, those owners are obviously, oh, here there's comes another more. one coming out, yeah. a couple more coming out. Great. And you consider the, 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 the stress oh. on this business right now. You see this dog with the leash, but are they able to access leashes for these dogs that they need to get out? Um, do they, you know, are they able to access kennels to bring out? I mean, we only Looks have like no idea just, how many dogs are inside. Yeah, they're, they're literally, we're seeing this in real time as the fire fighters and the rescuers are getting to these dogs and you can see them getting them to the people who've been waiting for them, you know, waiting for some sort of update since all of this happened. And, and you know, there, there's got to be a lot of relief over there as each one of these dogs comes out and is reunited with their loved ones. Relief for us, relief for everyone. And watching. I would yeah, just like to, if I, and, and if I can just pop in here and we don't know everything that happened, but I can say right off the bat, kudos and applause and cheers for DC Fire and EMS who knew what they were doing and knew the mission in front of them and 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 looks like they have succeeded in many, many cases. Does it look um, like it's still hope, active? Hope. Does it look like they're still working to rescue even more pets okay. that are in there or has the oh. I'm gonna go to a different angle than than James Hash is at. Uh, so I could see a different angle into into I just wonder if the posture um, of the EMS folks has, has changed. Yeah, um, there are still, oh, okay. So I'm looking, you're not seeing this from James's standpoint, but I'm looking into the front of the building. Here comes James. And if you go, Hash, if it's just straight back there and my reflection is in it, there are at least two, I can see two red hats, mm -hmm. which indicate the, the fire and EMS personnel. There are flashlights. Mm. So I, I don't think the search is over. So they're still going And I going don't know, through. there's another dog that just yeah. came out, multiple dogs, another dog just came out. Sorry, James, I think he's, uh, that one's already gone. But there's another dog. I think I've counted one, two, three, four, five, maybe a half dozen dogs already um, that have been brought out of this 
uh, this dog boarding facility uh, as it was described to me. Boy, they've um, had so quite, we just yeah. we just don't know how many. Yeah, they've had quite a. I'm day. sorry, Les. I was just going to say we just don't yeah. know. Yeah. And and you can see, I mean, it's clear that there's still work to be done uh, as you see the staffers at District Dogs that are really sort of laser focused on making sure that these dogs are going to be OK and that they're reunited. But I see just, more dogs inside. I see more dogs inside coming out right now. There are more dogs right. coming out right now. And Boy, now the challenge. The yeah, now the challenge for, for this business is you see uh, what, what the, the gentleman there in the green shorts has been handing off these dogs to a, a, a woman. Where are they taking them? Their owners are not on the scene if they're being boarded because the owners are out of town. Um, now, this well, right keep in mind, it would have like been impossible. Waiting. Go ahead, Eric. It would have been impossible. It would have just would have been impossible for them to get here. I mean, they, they might have been able to, that too. you know, get as close as they could park and run. But here comes another again, we're, one. We're, e. It's blocked off. Eric, here comes another dog right here coming out, which is I had a dog soaked each time we see them. So, you know, as as we're seeing them, and we've got to remember these these dogs were likely in a flooded space. Yeah. They're in an area where they were, sure. were, were enclosed. Right. And For they sure. look they look very traumatized. But certainly the best news of the day here is that they're able to get to them and they're getting them out of that water. There's another okay, four of two. them that have just come out. Five more have come out. James, Six. yeah, here's a reunion. Here's a reunion going on right now, James. I don't know if you can get it, but I can see the tears in her eyes. And I think she was just reunited. The best feeling. Is this your little right? dog? She's, she's, she's not. I think, just overcome I think the, after the look on her face says it what all. She's yeah. been through yeah. just waiting to see if everything yeah. was, was going to be okay. Knowing. Yeah, but think, not knowing. Yeah, I think we've counted Absolutely. roughly a dozen dogs Absolutely. come out of there right now. Yeah, and they keep coming. There's a there's another little one. There's another little one. And, and again, we don't know if these are the owners or just people who are trying to support these dogs to get them into a spot where oh. where and maybe I can ask this woman. I was just going to see. I I wanted to ask you, are you a dog? Okay, a lot of people kind of not, not in the mood to talk right now. I think maybe understandably and rightfully focused on the dogs uh, themselves, but um, you know, I, I Surely, uh, you, this community has really come together around district dogs because they've been through this before. The dogs have been through this situation before and yet they continue to come back. You sh just really hope that whatever the yeah. construction remedy is for some of this, uh, helps so that we're not in this situation over and over again and and you got to wonder if you're if you're the owner of district dogs if you're going to want to keep having to undergo this but when you see these little dogs come out I mean this is the best possible outcome after a really awful awful day there yeah and I, I can just describe to you what I'm seeing and I'm and I'm seeing conversations between that gentleman in the district dog shirt and and many of the the people who are carrying these dogs away and, and their their intense conversations and and their emotional conversations and, and you know with with the with the reporting and IFB in my ear it's hard to clearly really hear exactly what is being said back and forth I think the the biggest and most important thing is that every every you know dog parent who who walks away with their dog in their arms right now knows that you know there's a lot of questions maybe moving forward um, but certainly um, for now if you're walking away with your dog scared uh, wet but but in you know still still barking and in one piece then that's the most important thing and and there are more dogs coming out and I mean, this is one of the most really to DC EMS remarkable fire. scenes because I don't think you can imagine a training situation where this is something that they go through, right? Having to go into an enclosed, tight, flooded space to rescue as many dogs as you can. There's another um, one. He's happy to come out of And they're doing too. an amazing job. I mean, we've got at least a dozen or so dogs that have come out uh, so far, Eric. And uh, we, we just we just hope and pray for the best for all of the dogs that might still be for all inside. of them for all of them. We just don't know how yet. Yeah, Longo, we just don't know how far back they go. Here's two more coming out, three more coming out. Uh, I wish I had kept a count, but we have to be over two dozen. We, we just have to be. Yeah, at this it point. looks like it. You know, it, most a lot of people who board their dogs are away on vacation. So 
you know, you've got to believe that there are some folks who may be hearing about this who aren't here right now mm -hmm. and certainly wondering about their dogs. But, boy, this has got to be relieving in a lot of ways for, for folks who yeah, use this service. Like... James, let's go this way because it looks like there's a bit of a, I don't know, we're not going to lose the signal in here, are we? Possibly. Yeah, we may lose the signal. Let me, let me, all right, don't lose the signal. Let me just peek in here and see what's going on because it seems a lot of the staff members. So it looks like there is a bike storage room, a bike storage room in this garage here. And it looks like a lot of the dogs are just being temporarily mm -hmm. put into this bike storage room for safety. I'm seeing a lot of the same faces that are helping, whether they're associated or just concerned neighbors right. helping bring these dogs into this uh, bike storage room. So 